Your friends are scrolling through short content, but you, my friend, you're here to learn. Welcome to Yara's Clips. Law of attraction is mentioned twice, or the explanation for law of attraction is given twice in two different contexts in the Bhagavad Gita. One is a linear uh, growth where you just you have a goal in mind, you attract the circumstances, and you hit that goal. The second one is quantum results. Okay, so the linear results. Or uh, say, if I want to achieve a certain size, or you know, growth, or uh, a promotion, or something like a very specific goal in my mind, uh, Krishna says, "Ye yatha mam prapadyante tam sthayeva bhajamyam mama vartmanu vartante manushya partha sarvasha," which means, as one worships me, that is how I manifest to them. most people just limit their not limit but most people get a lot out of just this much of the verse but the next half of the verse is very interesting where krishna says mama vartmanu vartante manushya partha sarvasha everyone in whatever they are desiring in whatever they are wanting are propitiating me alone are calling on me alone so bhagwan through his devic power of maya grants what we are drawing yeah so what ends up happening sometimes when you think about maya you say are maya is wrong maya is wrong maya ko chhod do you have to get out of maya maya is the simulation ma yeah maya is the uh, potent energy of the lord which we can also go into depths about because these are really beautiful deep philosophical concepts but uh, we often you know in colloquial language we say maya is uh illusion illusory and which it which it is it's an illusion but it is an illusion in which we are existing so the beauty of maya is that you can utilize maya to achieve your goals now what are it depends on what your goals are right you can use it to achieve the goals uh, that you have in the worldly sense i want a house i want a partner i want blah 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 by focusing on that goal and then bhagwan says ye yatha mam prapadyante tam sat daiva jamyam as they worship me if they worship me as a relationship i will manifest as a relationship if they worship me as money i will manifest as money if they worship me as promotion i will manifest as promotion what does that mean if you worship me as x y z what so ultimately that anything that we are desiring comes from bhagwan alone you mean the desires are put into our head because of god uh the desires come from see the ultimate desire for anything is what happiness whether i want to drink a glass of water and i'm thirsty or i want to get married and have you know a family ultimately i think that this will give me happiness theek hai the problem is rather than searching for happiness we search for the interim steps and bhagwan understands that and he says i will create a system for you i will create an arrangement for you where you ask for what you want and that system will give it to you yeah that is the same thing as law of attraction and bhagwan says four types of people come to me chatur vidha bhajante mam tanaf sukruti norjuna artho jignyasur artharthi nyani cha bhartarshaba four so four types of people come to me arjuna or uh, worship me artho one who is distressed Oh Bhagwan, or I am broken up. I am, you know, uh, I need a partner, or I am really struggling financially. I need more money. Distressed. Jignyasur, one who wants to learn, one who has some desire to learn, some, and that could be spiritual learning, or it could be worldly learnings as well. I want to learn. I want to learn the molecular structure of this water. Ah, huh? so that ultimately that's also a desire, and that's also going to Bhagwan. Artharthi. so one who wants material growth yeah material possessions and so on and gyani all four so all four which in these four categories we can put all of us and all of our desires at any given time what is gyani gyani is a uh, one who is searching for knowledge highest spiritual knowledge spiritual growth. and self realization yeah okay so okay. if we think about all of our desires we can put them in these four categories mm. broadly mm. so if krishna is saying all these four are coming to me and i am servicing them and ultimately everything is through me then that law of attraction the linear path is being given by 
Krishna alone, by Bhagavan alone, whether you believe, you know, whether you see Krishna as your Ishta Devata or not. Bhagavan alone is giving all that. as a linear path to law of attraction. Then there is the quantum path, which is you start to see results that you had not even expected. There are quantum results happening. Quantum means what? In all directions, things are growing. In your health, you're growing. In your relationships, you're growing. In your work, you're growing. In, and that is having radial effects. You grow in your work, you mentor someone, they grow. They mentor someone, they grow. You earn some money, you spend it, you create a new industry, then the new people come in, they grow. And you're also growing. You know, these quantum results are happening on all sides. That quantum results, Bhagawan talks about in the form of Yajna. Now, Yajna is a phrase that most people are familiar with. Havan, may, is another word for Havan is Yajna, fire ceremony. Yeah. Now, Yajna, today we understand it as, um, A, we understand it as sacrifice because that's the English translation. But it's much deeper than that. Much, much deeper than that. Because you know, sacrifice creates this idea that I'm giving up something. But actually, it is an expression of abundance. That I have so much that I am thankful for it. And I'm saying that this has not been created by me. I am pouring myself into this. I'm pouring these offerings into the fire for, you know, for Bhagwan, for the divine who has made all of this possible. How do you say? In... Uh, in the Vedas, where they talk about Karma Khan, there are clear uh, instructions for Yajna. How should it be? And typically what used to happen when these big Yajnas used to take place, everyone in the community used to come and contribute. So some person would bring the grain, someone would bring the firewood, someone would bring um, the ghee, and someone would erect the tent, someone would clean the space, someone would come and chant, someone would cook the food. You know, so it was a community gathering. And this principle of yajna, today also we see Sarvajani Ganpati. If, I, if, I, if you're having a puja at your house, I'll come, I'll bow down, I'll leave some cash. That is also a form of yajna, a participating community participation. But yajna comes from realizing that there's something higher at play here that I am not doing. Then when we take the I out of the equation, then suddenly our insecurities go, our fears go, our um, you know, likes, dislikes, preferences, ye hona chahi, wo nahi, that clears away. And more of us is present in that moment to participate. So what Bhagavan says to Arjuna in chapter 3, chapter 4 of Bhagavad Gita, is you participate in this war, participate in your job, whatever your job is, Participate in it with Yajna spirit. Participate, participate in it by taking that I-ness and my-ness, take it out of it. Think that this is, I, I am expressing my abundance. I recognize that there's a higher power in play and see what happens. That's the law of attraction according to Hinduism. That is the law of attraction with quantum results. Where you flow with life and you say that, yes, I'll put in my effort, but... Actually, the results are totally dependent on you, the higher power. You recognize that there's a higher power at play, playing through you. And we stop getting in the way with our likes and dislikes. And when we get out of the way, then that higher power plays with, through you. What do you mean about this likes and dislikes? What do you mean you get out of the way? I'm, and I'm asking you this because it's the actionable step for human beings. Yeah. I'll, should I give you an example from my own life? Sure. Recently, sure. what happened? So, this get out of the way is I-ness and minus, okay? Which we could ordinarily call ego. Ego is what? I am this person and this jacket is mine. This job is mine. This, you know, whatever name, fame is mine. When we say that I am this person with this title, walking into the building, then suddenly if someone says, hey, then we'll be like, do you not know who I am? Then our ego gets pricked. Then what happens when our ego is pricked? We're not fully available in that moment to respond appropriately for what's required at that time. Yeah. So that I-ness and minus, i.e. our ego, can cause us to stumble through life. We'll get through life, but we will stumble through life. And that's what happens in the beginning of the Bhagavad Gita. 
where they have assembled for the war. But Arjuna sees his own family on the other side and his I-ness and minus gets pricked. Aray, how can I kill Bhishma? How can I kill my Guru? How can I do this? How can I fight this? The whole world will you know, suffer as a result of this. Krishna says, listen, you are saying wise things, but you are not actually talking wisdom. Take your I-ness and minus out of it and see the quantum results that come. That is Yagya. So in Hinduism, we have this theory, law of attraction. But we actually have it in a much more profound sense than it's currently explored on YouTube. Because we have the linear path, which is what we've got in The Secret. We also have this quantum path, which Shiva Shakti is in the Shaivite tradition. And through, uh, uh, from more Veda, uh, sorry, not just Shaivite, but from a um, Vaisheshika and a Sankhya tradition philosophically. And from a Vedantic perspective, philosophically, we've got this path of the Gita. So... It's kind of like you have to submit to a higher power, but at the same time, still give your best. Yeah. So, the, you see, in, in Hindu tradition, we have different paths. We have paths of bhakti, we have paths of jnana, we have paths of karma. These Principally, these three, the other paths also, right? So, in path of bhakti, we'll say, I submit to a higher power. They are acting through me. In path of jnana, it says, I recognize that this is, this is the play of different karmas. That this whole world is sustained by a divine principle. So I know that ultimately my fears are worthless. Because ultimately the higher principle is sustaining it. Karma is, I am here for a reason. I have to act. I am not going to run away from this field. I am going to do what's needed. So it's a slightly different bend depending on where your mind is at and which path you are following. Mm. But yes, ultimately the uh, there is unity across all three. The Western aspect of this law of attraction is you write down your goals, put uh -huh. it up, uh, think about it, meditate upon it. Uh, that's all I know about the Western law of attraction. Yeah. When people in the West talk about using it. Yeah. Is there a version of that in terms of actionables here? It's the same. You write down our goals, put it on the wall, look at it, visualize it. What are we doing? We mm. are doing a process that in Hinduism is known as Upasana. I look at, say for example, I want my dream house. I, take, I write that down. I want my dream house. It should have so many bedrooms. It should have so much outdoor land. It should have a balcony. This should be the view. You know, I take that, write all of that down. I find some nice reference photos, create a mood board, put it up on the wall and I look at it. I look at it and I say, oh, wow. You know, it'll have, and then ultimately, the power of my mind is in that linear direction. The full power of my mind is on that. And gradually the circumstances develop for that to manifest itself. Now, when we go into the temple, or when we sit down in our home temple to meditate, and we see a picture of Sri Ganesh, okay, what do we see? We see all of the same attributes of that. We see, oh, I have, sm you know, I have a large head, so I should have in a profound intellect to engage with the world. I have large ears, so I should listen more. My mouth should be covered, so speak at the appropriate time. I should have a trunk that is very, so I should navigate the world well. That, that trunk can pick up a log and can pick up a pin. It's very malleable to the situation. I have a large belly, so I should be able to digest everything that the world throws at me. I have four hands, which means I should be dexterous in the actions that come to me. I have a pasha and an ankush, which is a noose and a goat. So I should be able to push myself in the right situations as well as hold myself back in the right situations. So just as we are absorbing the visualization of a mood board in the Western concept of the law of attraction, in the same way we are absorbing the divine qualities of the Lord through the process of upasana. Now upasana in colloquial terms, we mean darshan. So we, what do we do when we go take darshan of the deity? We go to the temple, dekha, namaskar kiya, ek pradakshina kiya and we leave. Or we sit down for a period of time. But real darshan, let's sit there for a moment. Let's absorb the different, observe the different qualities of the deity. Observe the form. Reflect on oh, why does Bhagawan have some deities? Why do they have four hands? Why do some have more hands? Why do some have weapons? Why is someone on a lotus? So this process of upasana creates connection. That connection creates depth. That depth creates manifestation. 
Yeah. So, Krishna is what he's saying. Ye yatha maam prabhadyante. You can either think of him as his form in a deity and absorb him and connect with him and manifest. Or you can think of him as house. And he'll manifest. He's very willing. I'll manifest it for you through Maya. What do you have to do? Just desire. But who are you desiring for? Be conscious of that. Yeah. Am I desiring for myself or for my greatness? Or am I desiring for my evolution? And we can desire for our material things also for our evolution. May I get the right amount of money so that I can do good in the world? Lakshmi ji, may Lakshmi ji come to me so I can do Narayan Seva. Where do we see Lakshmi ji? At the feet of Narayan. So she is also doing Narayan Seva. So may material growth come to me so that I can use it for a higher good. Got it. So when your law of attraction is associated with spiritual growth and you submit, and you still work hard and hmm. do your duty well, like give your 100% in your work. Yeah. These four factors come together. Yeah. And actually give you your goals faster. Quantum growth happens. If you think about India's history, we were uh, Sone Ki Chidiya at one point, as they say, you know, um, large, a quarter of the world's GDP, you know, up, even up until relatively recently, in the last few hundred years, was produced and consumed in India. How did that quantum growth take place in ways that didn't happen elsewhere in the world? Because these were the underlying principles of society where we recognized that I have to act, I have to act for a higher goal and I have to act minus me for a big vision. Mm. So then those big visions started to manifest. Mm. Lots to absorb. <laughs> so if you enjoyed this video, make sure you check out this playlist for more videos just like this. It's TRS Clips.